Now, let's get another uh, take on what the federal government or where they sit going into the discussion about Net Zero 2050. Susan Lee is, of course, the Environment Minister in the federal government. She joins us now. Susan, nice to talk to you, mate. How you been? Really good, Paul. Nice to join you and your viewers tonight. I'm here on the Victoria New South Wales border where we've got the border bubble, uh, we've got unlocked communities, two sides of the river and a whole set of different rules for each. But all we want to do is get on with our lives and go back to work. I'm very jealous that you can go and get a palm. Uh, very, very je uh, jealous. Now, what's your position on whether the federal government needs to go uh, into the aspiration of net zero for 2050? I think we should achieve net zero. I think it is absolutely achievable. I believe as someone who's been a farmer for a great part of my life and represented farmers in Western New South Wales, that uh, it is the direction we need to take. But we do have to bring the community with us. And that's why the Prime Minister's approach has been so sensible. And that's why the debate where you're hearing lots of different views is actually going to get us to the best position that we need to be. Uh, you know, I talk about agriculture and net zero a lot, Paul. I never have constituents ring me the next day to say, I don't agree with you. And when I meet them at uh, any events that uh, I've been lucky enough to go to or out on the road, uh, they accept that it's necessary, but they do want us to take care to do it properly and not to leave any communities behind. Now, I, I don't know how this process works, so forgive me if it is a silly question, but I'm going to ask it this way. Australia has entered into a commitment about Paris, which means we know what happens between now and 2030. We presumably would be making an arrangement that goes from 2030 to 2050 after that. Is that how you understand the process to be? Because it's being presented by some that essentially uh, the bureaucracy would behave like it's uh, December 2049 from January next year. Look, they're two separate but related achievements, if you like. Now, uh, Glasgow and Angus Taylor's technology roadmap and the commission, the emissions contributions that we make and the pledges and the targets all belong in the next stage after Paris 2030. Net zero by 2050 is something that uh, the world is aiming for and it is about protecting the environment. So, yeah, they, look, they're separate but related. Um, what we do have to do, though, as a country and what we would always do as a government is not simply wave the target around and say, oh, haven't we done the right thing, which is perhaps what some countries have done. We actually believe in explaining what it would mean, what it would mean to rural communities, what it would mean to farmers and how we would get there. But, you know, I, I don't see it as a a net negative. I see it as a positive. Today, I announced a $171 million FOGO fund, which is food organics, garden organics. It's about turning kitchen waste and garden waste into healthy soils. And uh, at the moment, a lot of that ends up in landfills. So we turn it back into healthy soils. We make those soils more productive. They store carbon, uh, they hold water, they produce more, and they're healthier and they last longer in terms of uh, our landscape. So there's so much that our farmers can do and are doing to make a difference and help us achieve the goals that we need to. And it's not just about one single goal that says net zero. It's about all the adaptation that we want our landscape, or we know our landscape has to manage with climate change or uh, the changing seasons that Australian farmers have got used to since uh, as long as they've been here. So the people that are watching us right now um, who... Um have lots of people that they like, trust and, and, and see, hear and read who are telling them that, uh, you know, the political sky falls in if the government makes this decision. But also they're people who, um, well, they knew what the debate was in 2019. They knew what the debate was in 2016. They knew what the debate was in 2013. They knew what the debate was in 2010. It feels like an about face from all of those different electoral positions. Try explain to people why it's not. Well, Paul, I went into politics in 2001 and I've seen um, many policy changes and many arguments and many, ch many different positions. But what I have noticed is a general recognition, uh, accepting the science of climate change, accepting what it means to Australia's landscapes, promoting 
what we can do in oceans, in blue carbon, in farming, in the farming systems that we should be so proud of uh, in the clean green export trade we have. So I think that the community has moved and I think the understanding has grown. But as I said, I don't want to do this without bringing the communities with us, which is why I don't mind the current debate. It means people are talking about it. It means people are asking what it means for them and their jobs. And it does have to resonate, perhaps not in exactly the same way, but it has to work, if you like, in communities that I represent in Western New South Wales, in Queensland, uh, in the inner city suburbs. I mean, we are all one country. We know each other. We have links between city and country. COVID has proved that. Uh, you know, there aren't those divisions that uh, I think we're sometimes seeing painted, but there are differences of opinion and there are different industries.